So welcome back, we're going to do another dynamics problem. What this one says is that the skateboarder is moving to the left at a horizontal velocity of 1 meters per second. The boy runs in the same direction as the skateboard with a horizontal velocity of 3 meters per second relative to the skateboard and jumps onto it. What is the distance the boy reaches up the incline before momentarily coming to rest? The mass of the boy and the skateboard are 50 kilograms and 5 kilograms respectively. Neg neglect rolling resistance of the skateboard. So one thing that comes to me immediately is that this 3 meters per second relative to the skateboard. So what we're going to have to do is define the actual uh, velocity of the boy in absolute terms, in terms of this datum, this, uh, this ground right here. Not in terms of the skateboard because it is moving at 1 meters per second in the horizontal direction going that way. So when, whenever we have a collision like this or two bodies combining together and moving together after some certain state, we have to apply the conservation of momentum so we can find the final velocity that occurs to uh, both of the bodies. So to define the velocity of the boy, we have to use relative um, velocity. So we could define the velocity of the boy as the velocity of the skateboard plus the velocity of the boy relative to the skateboard. So you can imagine this skateboard right here. It is initially uh, moving at one meters per second. But if we're saying that the boy is moving at three meters per second relative to the skateboard, that means we're holding the skateboard fixed, meaning it's not moving, and then having the boy move um, relative to that fixed skateboard. So if it's if the boy is moving at some velocity and the skateboard is fixed, therefore the, the velocity of the boy relative to the skateboard is just that velocity. But now if we move the skateboard to the left one meters per second and we have the boy moving relative to the skateboard at three meters per second, all we have to do is add those two velocities to find the absolute velocity of the boy in terms of this datum or this ground. So since we know that the velocity of the skateboard is 1 meters per second and the velocity of the boy relative to the skateboard is 3 meters per second, we could say that the absolute velocity of the boy relative to this datum or the ground we could say is 4 meters per second. So I'm going to define those variables. So the velocity of the skateboard is 1 meters per second to the left and the velocity of the boy is simply 4 meters per second. So now that we have that defined, now we can actually apply the conservation of momentum to define what the velocity is. The velocity is of the two bodies, such, uh, which is the boy and the skateboard. So we could say, um, well, the first thing I'm going to do is actually define left as positive. Um, and that's just simply so I could ignore negative signs and then we could just make this problem a little bit easier. But for this part of the problem, just this momentum part, I'm going to define left as positive. So uh, what we can do is define the momentum equation. So we can say that the, the momentum of the boy times the velocity of the boy plus the, the mass of the skateboard. I, know I said momentum, but I meant mass. Uh, mass of the skateboard plus the velocity of the skateboard equals the mass of the boy plus the mass of the skateboard times the final velocity of the skateboard. So this is the velocity right when the boy and skateboard are together. They're acting as one body. So this is the individual velocities, the velocity of the boy initially, and then this is the velocity of the skateboard initially. And then when you have some moment later when the boy is actually on the skateboard, this is going to be some velocity v. So all we have to do is isolate v to find the, that velocity and we can find that total distance traveled. So we could say that v is simply defined by this equation. So mb vb plus ms vs divided by mb plus ms. Now all we have to do is plug in numbers so we get this. So what I get from plugging in my calculator is 3.727 meters per second. So again, this is the velocity of the boy and the skateboard after they have been in contact. And we can ignore rolling friction. So let's say uh, the, the boy and the skateboard come in contact at this point. There's going to be no friction um, resisting that velocity 
Uh, so therefore, the velocity here is going to be the same velocity as here. So since we know that, we could actually find how far this, uh, this boy travels up this incline by using the conservation of energy now. So all we have to do is define our datums and our reference frames and stuff like that. So I'm going to define this as the zero point for the energy state or potential energy. I'm going to call this a zero point and this is going to be some value or some height called h and we can define the relationship in h in terms of this angle which I'm going to call theta. So I'm going to call theta equals 30 degrees so I could say that h is simply d sine of theta and we could use this later to find uh, this uh, length d. So what we can do is actually define the energy conservation equation which is pretty easy so we could say that kinetic energy initially plus the potential energy initially plus work done equals the final kinetic energy plus the final potential energy. So we're going to start using this equation right when the boy comes in contact with the skateboard. So we're only looking from here on. We're not looking anywhere past that because we already deal with this um, with the momentum equation. So we're going to look from this point onward and what we're going to see is that the boy does have some initial kinetic energy. He does not have any potential energy because I define zero as this bottom part or the ground which is in level with the boy and the skateboard. So he has no initial potential energy. He has kinetic energy and there is no external forces acting onto this body or these or the child and the skateboard because we can ignore any rolling resistance or any friction so therefore there's no work done on the body so we can now look at the final state so the final state is going to be somewhere around here and that's going to be when the child comes to rest on a skateboard so that means it's going to have no kinetic energy at the end of it but we're all but that all that kinetic energy is going to be converted into potential energy because it moved up a height h what we what all that means is that there's some kinetic energy in the beginning there's no potential energy in the beginning there's no work done because there's no external forces and there's no kinetic energy at the end so all we are left with is that kinetic energy in the beginning equals the potential energy at the end so that's very simply all we could we could write is that um, we could say that one half the mass of the boy plus the mass of the skateboard because we're looking at the full body which is the child and the skateboard times the final velocity squared equals m g h and I realize m is actually m b plus m s times g h and we defined h earlier which is d sine theta so we could say that this right here equals m b plus m s v squared equals m b plus m s g d sine theta and we notice the mass actually cancels so we don't have to worry about that so we could define the final velocity or we could actually define the distance d in terms of the final velocity gravity and the angle so we could say that d equals 2g sine theta and that's the denominator of v squared so if we plug in some numbers what we'll equals 1.416 meters and that's before the child comes to rest on the incline so I'm going to click quickly recap what we just did so the very first thing we did is actually define the velocity of the boy we're given that the relative velocity between the boy and the skateboard was 3 meters per second but we also knew the skateboard was moving at 1 meters per second as well so we simply found the absolute velocity of the boy relative to this datum or this reference frame that's stationary um, by adding the two vectors together which gives us 4 meters per second from there we use the conservation of momentum so whenever we have two bodies contacting each other and moving together after some initial state then we have to apply some uh, the idea of conservation of momentum so that's what we did here so we got the mass of the boy times the velocity of the boy 
uh, plus the mass of the skateboard plus the velocity of the skateboard. And then after those two bodies have it connected or joined together, we can treat them as one body, such as the mass of the boy and the mass of the skateboard times the whole body, um, the whole body's velocity, which is going to be the final velocity after they have connected, which is as shown here. So we have some initial velocity of the boy, some initial velocity of the skateboard, and after some time, it's going to be just the velocity of both the boy and the skateboard. So that's what this equation finds. So that's the velocity of the boy in the skateboard. And then we apply the idea of the conservation of energy. So we looked at the boy's kinetic potential and the work being done onto the skateboard um, all together to apply that equation. So initially, this, the boy and the skateboard have some initial velocity, so it has some kinetic energy. I define the zero point for potential energy at this line. So we're going to say that the boy and the skateboard are at zero potential energy at the beginning. But after they travel some distance before they come to rest, we're going to say it has some potential energy, which is relative to this um, height h. But the boy and the skateboard are going to come to rest, so they're not going to have any potential, uh, uh, or they're not going to have any kinetic energy. And there are all, also no work being done onto the boy and the skateboard because there's no external forces. So that allows us to say that the initial kinetic energy is equal to the final potential energy. So we use that equation and we define the kinetic energy as one half the mass of the boy and the skateboard times the velocity squared equals mass of the boy and the skateboard times g times the height they traveled upward. So from there, all we had to do is isolate d or the distance traveled, and what we get is 1.416 meters. So hopefully that helped. Hopefully it wasn't too confusing. Uh, the most confusing part probably would be this relative velocity um, and the idea that you have to apply momentum uh, when two bodies interact like this. So uh, that's probably like the most difficult part. Everything else is pretty straightforward. Um, yeah, so if you have any questions, feel free to comment down below. I'll be posting more dynamics problems in the future.